Okay, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, the session is called Increasing Website Revenue by Driving Social Behaviors. I'm Oliver Roop, the founder and CEO of Viglink. Uh, I think the first thing uh, that I'm supposed to point out to you here is the, uh, there is a, um, a poll you can all fill out. I believe their paper copies have been distributed and you can also use your smartphone. Um, I presume you've done this earlier this morning so you probably know how this all <laughs> works better than I do. So, um, an interesting sea change is going on uh, on the web right now. Uh, as, as recently as three, four years ago, the most common uh, purchasing behavior we saw out of consumers was a very simple pattern where a, where a consumer would go to a search engine uh, you know, and, and type the name of the product they were looking for uh, and often land uh, you know, on a merchant site and perform product selection on the merchant site uh, you know, and end up purchasing right there. And, and you know, certainly there were, there were lots of varieties, but even three, four years ago, we really saw this as the predominant uh, way that um, purchasing was taking place. We have seen a, a, a big change in behavior over the last couple of years, and this is actually a, a clip out of a uh, study performed and published by Google called the Zero Moment of Truth, uh, which showed that from 2010 to 2011, the percentage of shoppers that used social media, social sources as an influential driver in, in product purchase decisions has roughly doubled in a single year, from 19% to 37%, so 95% increase. Uh, and, and certainly, in fact, the study was conducted in the middle of 2011, so uh, certainly by now I, I think the, you know, the trend has continued. And I think you, uh, you know, certainly you don't have to look very far online or in the news to to see the real sea change underway. Uh, you know, Pinterest is probably the latest, uh, you know, um, big mindshare grabber that is just sort of changing the way that people, uh, you know, select products and make purchasing uh, decisions. Um, so one of our customers, um, Kodak Gallery, uh, this is a quote uh, from Cynthia Thomas. I won't sort of read the whole thing, but, but if you'll notice the highlighted parts, uh, you know, traditional avenues no longer provide a clear purchase funnel, and the shift requires us to invest in a lot of different pots. So merchants are finding that to secure uh, consumers when they're making, at their moment of purchase decision, that their behavior has changed fairly substantially even in just the last year, uh, and that we see that continuing dramatically. So some of the old techniques uh, which were around securing traffic from search engines through paid and, and SEO means, uh, you know, creating landing pages, uh, you know, to convert and, and, you know, sort of securing purchases uh, that way really are, are uh, deteriorating in effectiveness pretty dramatically, uh, you know, and, and very rapidly. So we see, what do we see now? Uh, this is just a specific example. There are, there are many different sort of uh, instantiations of this. Here's an example of a, of a consumer searching for best Blu-ray players uh, or, or searching Twitter, uh, you know, or searching Facebook, um, and then seeking guidance, you know, from the community. And, um, you know, we've shown an example here of a forum uh, where a consumer, you know, reads the, the accumulated content, uh, you know, that has accrued in the forum surrounding, uh, you know, the products, and makes a purchase decision before they ever get to the merchant site uh, you know, or the affiliate landing page, and and the purchase decision has sort of moved upstream, uh, and so, you know, this really is going to require new tools, new techniques from affiliates uh, to capture. Uh, but the, you know, there's plenty of good news in this story. Um, the uh, again quoted out of the the Google uh, study, um, Kim Cadillac, the Johnson and Johnson brand manager you know, really is looking at how do you become a part of the content? How, you know, that's the challenge and the opportunity. So how can brands seeking to engage with consumers change their behavior to become a part of the content so that this new behavior, uh, you know, that we're seeing out of users, you know, you can still reach them, uh, you know, still affect purchasing decisions. So uh, I'd like to propose one answer here and, and essentially walk you through a case study. Uh, certainly, you know, lots is still being learned about social media and we certainly, you know, uh, wouldn't say we know about all, all the aspects of it. I, I think the, the first thing I want to say is you, you definitely keep doing what you're doing. 
So, so no one is saying that you should stop doing SEO, SEM, you should stop building great landing pages, uh, you know, you should stop sort of understanding your in incoming traffic. All, all those techniques uh, remain uh, valid, absolutely. Um, but really, uh, we want to walk you through, I want to walk you through a couple examples where, uh, can you, where a social component can be attached uh, into the, the, the purchase decision, which both uh, attaches uh, to this new behavior seeing out of consumers and in fact gives the affiliate leverage in the sense that when you can get this cycle flowing, um, really uh, you find the wind is at your back and, and the, you know, the work you need to do to continue the cycle actually, you know, sort of reduces over time and, and you start to find, uh, you know, a, a sort of snowball rolling downhill. Um, so what that is really is creating a space where purchasing decisions are made, trying to be the center of that purchasing decision within whatever niche your, your products or services are in. So I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'll get to a specific example in a sec, but I think the, the specifics really are, um, you know, if, if you can create a social community around the products uh, and services that you sell, uh, you know, what are the upsides, right? Increased engagement. Imagine it's essentially a, you know, a water cooler where your users are hanging around talking about your products, evangelizing them to others, uh, discussing the nuances, and effectively creating free content on your behalf, right? I think that that's what uh, effective... Um, effective communities uh, you know, that, have, that have gathered engagement, that have reached critical mass, that's what's happening, that the user community uh, is creating content uh, you know, w without you sort of directly paying for it or creating it yourself. And, and certainly when that happens, it's, it's a magical thing. And you find users coming back on their own. Uh, you know, traditional affiliate um, sort of sites and, and properties often don't see a lot of repeat traffic, a lot of organic traffic. Uh, really, it's, you know, it's about sort of paid driving, you know, driving traffic uh, to the site and, and, you know, less so about users coming back on their own. Um, and so if you can create this community, you know, you really see um, the, the visible part is, is sort of users hanging around creating content and, and, the, and the part that shows up in the data but is not immediately visible just by looking at the page is higher click-through rates, um, you know, more uh, the, the sort of take of your affiliate links, uh, you know, can improve dramatically when, when it comes from a conversation, uh, you know, that's credible and has uh, user engagement. So I feel like I've been sort of talking a little abstractly. Let's start by saying, what am I not saying? I'm not saying what you need to do is go buy ads on Facebook. I'm not saying what you need to do is go buy sponsored tweets. I think both of those are uh, you know, attempts to, to shortcut this process, and I think they certainly work in certain circumstances. But what we are talking about is, uh, again, sorry, n another example of not, not just a, this is a, this is a customer we've seen, um, you know, of just trying to put their existing creative into a Facebook page and, and seeing poor engagement. Um, here's an example of, of user tweeting. Uh, you know, please, I only need five more followers to hit 500. Uh, you know, if you think this is effective messaging for your brand, uh, you know, it's, it's not. And we've, we've mercifully, I think, removed the, the, uh, the names. So this is one of our customers. It's called Watch You Seek. Um, and they are, uh, you know, a watch vendor. Um, and notably what they've done is they've done a really great job of integrating community into their, you know, what otherwise would be a... Uh, a pure merchant site, right? You, you could certainly imagine there are many uh, examples on the net of just, you know, here's the watches to buy, click here to buy them. Watch you see has put a really a lot of effort into, uh, you know, building a community. Um, and they, uh, if, if you just sort of read the copy on, on site, they have tons of forums, both official and unofficial. They've gone so far, they've, you know, they've succeeded to the point of getting watchmakers to use them as the official, uh, you know, um, forum for watches. Obviously, not everyone's going to be able to succeed in doing that, but really creating a territory where uh, products are, are discussed in a positive way, and that has great sort of bleed-off commerce opportunities for watch you seek. It brings their customers back. Uh, it gets people talking about them repeatedly, uh, and, and it really... 
um, you know, has, has a ton of benefits. So um, you can see, you know, here's, here's an example in their site. Um, you know, 898 members and 5,000 odd viewers are, are looking at this site right now. So that kind of engagement, that's something that you can't get out of a flat landing page, right? So if you have a flat page that says, um, you know, this is why you should buy the product, it doesn't have the same effectiveness as here are all the other people who are essentially sitting next to you talking about the same things uh, and, and, you know, sitting where you are right now. This is a crowded place, uh, you know, and, and that feeling of community definitely our customers say has, has you know, a sort of a big impact on, on monetization. Um, and, and then you see the integration into Facebook and Twitter, which is what you want, right? You, what you want is for your customers to be organically inserting you into the parts of, uh, you know, the, the organic parts of Facebook and Twitter, right? Not sponsored tweets, but organic tweets. Not sponsored ads on the, the right column in Facebook, but, uh, you know, organic shares where users sort of just enthusiastically, uh, you know, um, share uh, references with their friends. Um, and of course, you know, the, the search engines can't capture this, but they certainly pick it up. Uh, you know, when, when uh, you know, if it, to, to secure engagement to your site, Twitter, you know, increasingly a, a big source for, for Google. Facebook, obviously, less so. Uh, you know, but, but certainly, uh, you know, organic user engagement is really the, the holy grail of what you're looking for. Uh, and you can see, at least for Watch You Seek, it's really paid off in traffic. So, uh, you know, there's a, there's a group called, uh, you know, All Watch Sites, uh, and Watch You Seek is ranked number one. Um, and really, you know, this, uh, certainly if you talk to the owners, uh, you know, they would tell you it's, it's a result of, of the community, right? The community is not a, a sort of bolt-on that they added, but it, but it is sort of core to the, the mission that they're, that they're performing. So they think of themselves more and more as really a community, uh, you know, that feeds commerce rather than commerce that has a, a community bolt-on. Um, Another great example of like what happens when organic traffic really gets going, um, you can see repeat visitors. So this this visitor uh, with the OB1 logo, Sub Rosa, uh, you know you can see 15 posts. Uh, you know joined October 2011 is posted 15 times. I think that's the kind of engagement that a lot of affiliates would really kill for, right? So to really have enthusiasts, uh, you know, out there pointing to your site, discussing your site, sort of egging on other users. Um, you can see, you know, the, the upper left here, uh, you know, the, the comment, you know, I'd recommend a Hirsch Liberty series of straps, and, and the person said, you know, I ended up ordering a Jurgens Buffalo. That, you know, that's commerce happening in the field, right? That is social behavior um, driven by, um, you know, by, by a lively community. Um, and, and so, you know, as this picks up, you know, you can look at some of these numbers here in this particular case. You know, free, high-quality content, which sort of begets more of itself, um, all of which inherently contain opportunities to monetize, right? So all of these conversations, or many of these conversations, take the form of, you know, I have $1,000 in my hand, and I'm thinking, I'm trying to decide between item A and item B. What do you guys think? You know, discussion ensues. Uh, you know, and we, uh, we measure the sort of engagement through from that content, uh, and it's dramatic, it's really impressive that, uh, you know, the downstream purchasing that happens as a result of, uh, you know, user engagement and sort of organic threads, uh, you know, is really something to be envied by a lot of the affiliates in the room. And, and you know, increasingly, uh, you know, Pandas, uh, the, the Panda changes that Google has done recently, only enhance this effect, right? More and more you're seeing these sort of you know, forum and, and other like real organic content of real users discussing things are getting increasingly, uh, you know, good focus from the search engines. And the traditional, you know, affiliate landing pages are really having a harder and harder time, uh, you know, attracting the notice and, and getting the traffic. Um, so Watch Seek is a great example of, you know, a community where purchasing decisions are made, right? People, uh, you know, make uh, decisions to buy, and, you know, in the case of luxury watches, obviously it's very high value items, uh, expensive items, high margin items. 
Uh, but really, we see this across the gamut, that, that really almost every sort of product and service genre uh, has at least the opportunity for lively, engaged communities. And, and, you know, obviously the challenge becomes if you're in a crowded space, you know, how do you break in? And, and certainly, you know, there are techniques there. But I think, you know, the, the certainly in our discussions here with, uh, you know, affiliates, I think the, the sort of need for real communities uh, you know, it's, I think it's fairly emerging. It's not, um, uh, we have not found that, you know, affiliates sort of deeply embrace uh, the need to create communities around, uh, you know, the content they're building. And let's face it, it is a lot of work. So, so certainly, and, and you don't get to not do the work you were doing before. Uh, and so, you know, certainly, uh, you know, it adds, it adds complexity. Um, so let's say, okay, you're signed up. You, you like the idea, let's, let's build a forum. Uh, you know, what, what kinds of things can I do? It doesn't have to be a forum, but any kind of community. Um, what sort of things should I do to, to sort of achieve success, uh, you know, in, in what I want to create? Well, the first I'd say is to incorporate your community within your main site as tightly as possible. So I think uh, certainly a number of, um, I think probably the worst offenders are um, consumer electronics manufacturers. You know, they have sort of an entire site built out and then somewhere off in the corner there's a button of, community or forum or, or um, you know, users. And, and it sort of goes off to a whole different site that no one really goes to uh, and, and isn't really, you know, an organic part of the site. Uh, and, and those communities often fail. So really, uh, you know, integrating your community deeply into your site, uh, you know, so it feels like where people are, uh, you know, is, is, is definitely a, a critical first step. Um, Really, you can organize your community in a way that encourages but doesn't force product discussion. So you get to, uh, you know, highlight what the forum threads are. You can set your own. Uh, you can um, s make sticky certain threads and sort of force them to the top. Uh, and you can really seed discussions. And, um, you know, obviously there's a fine line here between, you know, sort of pushing this too hard uh, and, and forcing, uh, you know, trying to force... Uh, you know, buying discussions, but, you know, we found that amongst enthusiasts, uh, you know, they're really receptive to this kind of conversation. So really organizing your forum in a way that sort of enhances commerce, uh, you know, is really, is really welcome. Um, I'd say be careful not to, you know, put a hole in your own boat. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, introducing this, this actually is uh, one of our customers uh, who we've carefully filed the name off for, uh, but, um, you know, making it difficult to participate in the forum, in this case by sort of reducing the surface area of the forum that's visible, uh, you know, by, by introducing ad units, uh, you know, certainly will win you a little bit of ad revenue, but, uh, you know, really hampers the success of your forum and will make it very difficult, uh, you know, to uh, engage your users and, and you know, certainly um, likely to produce bad results. Um, Mac Rumors is actually a site that does a great thing. They actually um, essentially link their comments through, they, they essentially uh, replace their uh, comments with a forum. So if you think about the range of, of comment technologies that are available out there, I'd say at one end is probably the, you know, the Facebook commenting uh, uh, platform where the Ability to have rich discussions is somewhat limited, right? That the sort of nesting is is difficult. Um, on the upside, there's there's good identity, but um, you know the the ability to have real sort of discussions in Facebook forum com in Facebook comments is is quite limited. Uh, you know, discuss is probably a little better. If you, I'm sure everyone's interacted with websites with discuss on it, uh, that you know that, that really makes it possible to have sort of deep, rich conversations. And I think Mac Rumors has taken it. You know, right to the extreme by essentially building a, uh, you know, a, a replacing their comment system with a forum, but in in a really organic way. So essentially, each of the, you know, every time someone has the urge to comment, they they run through to the forum, and so the each comment becomes a page with a permalink, uh, you know, where real discussion can happen that people can refer to that has links in it. Uh, you know, and, and really enables the, the creation of real content, uh, you know, around uh, the user discussion, right? So if your users are already excited to discuss, don't give them the tools that make that difficult. Make, give them the tools that make that easy. 
And Mac Rumors is a good example that's had some success there. Another great way to seed conversations is to ask questions. So once you have some form of community engagement, seeding it is a really low cost way to keep discussion going. So you see the questions here. Do slash query readers own any of the aforementioned smartphone devices? Which ones? Have you found carrier IQ testing software on your device yet? Those kinds of questions stimulate conversation. And if you think about the ROI that's needed there, it's really quite, the investment that's needed to get that return is really quite low. Like a blog post is potentially a lot of work. An article of some kind is a lot of work. Asking a simple question, you can bang it out in the first few minutes of every day. And as your community starts to gel, you're going to find yourself getting traction around creating discussion that your users create for you. And that just creates more engagement, more page views, and ultimately more commerce. And then don't be afraid to be a little provocative. Gizmodo here, obviously not a sort of the same type of community we've been talking all this time. But the headline here, eat some babies, save some homework, and head on down to Ninja Town. That is likely to create discussion and engagement and controversy, which in our view is generally positive. I think all PR is good PR. Really, I think engagement, for the most part, with your users is almost always a positive thing. And then we spoke earlier about ad revenue. And you saw an example of a really bad, intrusive case where ad revenue sort of detracted from the forum. I think the more traffic you have, certainly there's always an opportunity to introduce ad revenue. In the case of affiliates, often it's not sort of ad revenue. It's more like conversion attempts to the product you're already working on. But certainly there is, our customers have found there is definitely an appropriate place for ads within the content. And certainly there's a place for that. It's not ruled out entirely by communities. Communities don't reject it, per se. And then really taking advantage of the product references and opportunities for commerce that do appear is really critical. So I think when you see references to products or commercializable discussions, enabling commerce in the sense where linking out to the relevant product that's already being discussed or other monetization opportunities, we find is both critical and not poorly received by publishers or by users, excuse me. So as long as they understand that monetization is occurring here, we certainly find that users who are surprised to learn that monetization is occurring in this content get upset. But I think if the forum or community discloses up front, look, commerce is happening here. We link out to monetization opportunities, and we collect affiliate fees there. We've definitely found users tolerant or receptive. And doing the work here is a technology. Actually, so this is what Viglink does. We essentially help the monetization of existing content. So I think I blasted through that a little faster than expected. Definitely happy to take questions. Any questions? So we certainly, there are cases, so thank you, Eric. The linking opportunity, like when an organic discussion happens, there is a trade-off between trying to keep the product reference as sort of natural within the conversation on one hand and sort of really 
you know, enhancing the brand of the product being discussed on the other. So I think uh, on one sort of far extreme, you might imagine, you know, like a really great version of Vibrant or something where, you know, you mouse over a, a product name and sort of, you know, the, the price of the item, a photo of the item, where else you can buy the item, sort of all contextually pops in there. I think on the, on the far other extreme is, uh, you know, just a flat link, which sort of has no brand enhancement. Um, you know, I think that is, a, that is a spectrum we've seen a number of our customers have very different um, appetites for. And, and certainly, um, I'd say our customers probably tend more towards the latter side, where it's, it's a little less intrusive and, and there's less sort of brand enhancement. But certainly, uh, you know, there's an opportunity for both publisher and merchant to, uh, you know, increase the, the brand and, you know, have, have you know, greater impact. So, so you could imagine... Uh, you know, linked to a comparison shopping engine like Nextag, uh, you know, and makes it clear this is Nextag, uh, who sell, you know, we're linking this product reference out to Nextag, and here's a photo, and here's the price. Uh, and, and I'd say, you know, that's a great example. Saw another question back there. That's right. Right. So, so that is definitely the hardest spot. And, and I think the, the, the answer is you probably don't. You start by becoming a participant on an existing forum, assuming one exists, right? I, I, think, I think there's two there's two scenarios there. One is trying to break into a community that's well served, like you know watches or automotive parts. Um, I think where there's not an existing one, uh, you know, really it becomes like any other website promotion, right? You, you go where the users are and you you promote, you sort of talk about your forum, uh, you know, this great discussion, you, you know, you seed the discussion, you try to convince, you know, hopefully if you're an enthusiast, you have a, a small group of friends who are, uh, you know, versing in the topic and you kind of bring them in by, by hook or by crook. And, and then you really, you know, you, you reference your forum on other forums, you, um, you know, it's, it's promotion. Uh, but, but certainly that bootstrapping is, is definitely the toughest part. And, and certainly, you know, it's easy to stand up here and talk about Watch You Seek that's already the sort of number one watch forum and, you know, how great they are. But, but you know, they have enough traction uh, that they can keep doing. Seeding from zero, really, in our experience, at least in the case of classical forums, most of them happen when there's some sort of schism in, in a, an earlier popular forum. So often, uh, you know, you reach the sort of, um, you know, the number where a community stopped gelling and some subset gets pissed off and basically says, we're going to go start our own forum. And, and that actually happens quite a lot. Uh, I don't know that I'd necessarily try to precipitate that. I think it could uh, cause blowback. But, but I think really, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's promotion. Uh, but, but it can start quite small. I mean, a, you know, a seed group of 5, 10 users is really enough to start a conversation that feels real, that, that can accrete. Anyone else? Please. I'm just wondering if, if uh, the vendors that are being discussed are being discussed about in a negative fashion, can that harm your relationship with them since you're facilitating? So that's a great question. I think um, in our experience, that's inevitable, in fact, right? The, so I'm sorry. The question was, if the vendors being discussed are discussed in a negative fashion, can that hurt your relationship with them because... Uh, you know, you're facilitating that conversation. So I think, uh, it's a great question, I think um, inevitably negative conversations will happen about every vendor, uh, you know, on your forum. I think most vendors understand, you know, the, the, the ordinary stuff, right? You know, the, the, the negative comments that are sort of one in five. Certainly, um, you know, when th there, there are cases where things sort of spiral out of control, right? And, the, and there's just sort of really vitriolic stuff going on. It's a tough judgment call, right? You can you can lock the thread and sort of shut it down, but but definitely if if you start to be observed by your users as sort of a tool of the of the merchants, uh, your form will, your your community will lose credibility quickly and and can sort of dry up. Uh, and so I would say, for the most part, um, our customers tend the other way and tend to sort of let that stuff go and say, look, like we're a we're a forum. I'm sorry. Maybe we can 
bring one of your reps in to advocate on behalf of the company. So I'd say basically the you as the site owner should try not to engage in advocacy, but to behind the scenes bring in the vendor to advocate on their own behalf. I think if you as a site owner start to try to turn the dial, you can definitely cost the credibility uh, you know, of, of your community. But you know, there certainly are cases. Uh, you know, every forum has, has people who've been banned, you know, and that you know, usually is around antisocial behavior. Uh, forums, for whatever reason, have a, have a sort of lineage of pseudonymity uh, where the identities are persistent but not real like they are on Facebook. Um, and that, you know, th that has certain attributes, one of which is pretty freewheeling discussion, but a negative one of which can be, you know, somewhat antisocial uh, behavior. And so there is, um, you know, there are tools available to the forum and community owner to, to sort of try and tamp that down and, you know, banning and sort of slow, slow accounts. Um, but I'd say in general, you know, our customers have, have, you know, tell us that they try not to take a side, but at least to give the other side an opportunity to respond. Absolutely. Next question. I have a question just about social proof you were talking about before. One of the things that you mentioned, I was just making an update to my site. Do you feel it's important for like world maps to show how many people are on site at the same time, how many people visit the site in the last 30 days? Is that good social proof? And does that lead to better proof? I think it's good social proof if your numbers are impressive. Uh, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think w certainly our, um, you know, we we have our, our customers who do that speak highly of it and believe it works. I think we have not done sort of A/B testing, double blind, but I think certainly anecdotally, in the in the community, that there's a strong belief that's true. As long as your numbers are impressive, I think nothing is worse than, you know, three posts in the last 30 days. Uh, you know, actually, the, the, the simplest one that people often screw up is copyright 2009. You know, like that. Nothing says dead. You know, dead site like that. So, so I think um, certainly a feeling of other of, of community and vibrancy. Other people are around. Uh, you know, uh, if if you know your software permits it, sort of live updating where you can see new things pop in as you're reading. All fantastic. Uh, you know, social proof, as you mentioned. Next question. One more, maybe? <laughs> yes? Do you recommend any software for forums? So I'd, I'd say that, the, <laughs> it's funny, I hesitate to use the word most popular. I'd say the most heavily used, I, certainly among our customer base, is vBulletin. Um, but, but it's certainly this sort of interesting, somewhat, uh, you know, there's a fair amount of archaeology involved. Um, you know, so, but, but I say vBulletin is most commonly used. PHPBB is very popular. Uh, th there are some new takes going on. So uh, the guys at Huddler, for example, um, you know, it's, it's a new startup that has done a great job of migrating forums from whatever old technology they're on to a new platform that SEOs well, that looks good, that's responsive, that loads quickly. Uh, you know, and, and I'd say they're a great example, uh, and, and they're a customer of ours as well. Um, you know, the, the Xero, X-E-R-O, um, is, is another uh, sort of forum um, software out of the UK by some of the founders of vBulletin. Um, they, uh, you know, they're getting a lot of traction as well. So I think um, you can sort of browse around and find. I'd say those are probably the three or four most popular out there. Next question. Great. Okay. Well, uh, I apologize for running a little quick. I think, uh, obviously, uh, new material blasted out a little fast. But thank you very much for joining. I'll be around after the talk. Actually, David Gorsi down here, uh, if you'd like to learn a little more about Viglink, uh, he and I will be around after the, the talk, and we'd love to chat with you. Thank you.